Hello and welcome to Introduction to Japanese Writing. Our first step here is to take a look at the different types of writing systems used in modern Japanese. We begin our examination of the Japanese writing systems by taking a look at a word that most of you probably already know, sushi. I've put the English and Japanese spellings of the words uh, together here so that you can compare the two. They're pronounced identically. Sushi in English and sushi in Japanese. Take a moment and examine the two and see if you can figure out what's going on here. I'll give you a hint. It has something to do with the number of characters that are written here. If you count the syllables in the English word sushi, you'll see that there are two. Su and Shi. If you count the letters or the characters in the Japanese word below, you'll see that there are two here as well. Su and Shi. Japanese, then, is written in syllables rather than in individual letters, like our English alphabet. Basic Japanese, then, is written using a syllabary and not an alphabet. In an alphabetic writing system, like our own, we need to build syllables using individual alphabetic characters. For example, when we spelled sushi a moment ago, it took us five alphabetic letters to do so. S-U-S-H-I. However, in a syllabary, each character represents a syllable. And that's why when we write in Japanese, it only takes us as many characters as there are syllables in the word. su shi Two syllables, two characters. There's two syllabaries commonly used in modern Japanese. The first is hiragana. Once again, that's hiragana. And the second is katakana. Once more, that's katakana. Hiragana is taught to Japanese children in kindergarten and is used to write words of Japanese origin, native Japanese words. These are the first characters that Japanese children concern themselves when they learn to start writing. And uh, this is what we're looking at in today's presentation. Katakana, the secondary system, is taught to Japanese children in the first grade and is used to write words of foreign origin, that is to say, non-Japanese words. The words for chocolate, the word for donuts, and so on. Uh, these being non-Japanese words would normally be written in katakana. So modern Japanese uses hiragana and katakana, both syllabaries. How can we tell the two apart? Take a look here, down below, I have uh, words written in hiragana on the left-hand side and some words written in katakana on the right-hand side. The words are pronounced the same, identically, in either column. Here, banana, banana, sushi, sushi, samurai, samurai, sumo, sumo. So there's no difference between how they are pronounced, but, of course, they look rather different. Take a moment, if you would, and see if you can tell or notice some stylistic differences between the two. How can you tell hiragana from katakana? Were you able to find any differences? Hopefully you picked up on the fact that hiragana looks rather more curvy than does katakana. Notice at the bottom of these characters, this is the word banana, we have these little loops. There's a loop here, there's another sort of curve here. Uh, hiragana is much more rounded more flowing, more curvy than is katakana. In the right-hand column here, katakana, again, if you take a close look, you'll notice that these are rather sharper looking. Uh, these look like if they were physical objects, you know, you could do some damage with these. Uh, the angles on these are not at all sort of friendly and curvy as the ones in hiragana. So, hiragana look rather more curvy, katakana more sharp and angular. Stylistically, then, hiragana is curvy and katakana is sharp. Modern Japanese also uses a third style of writing called kanji. Kanji are simultaneously ideographic, that is to say, each character represents a concept or an idea, and are also phonetic in nature, that is to say, they have a pronunciation that goes along with them as well. You can tell kanji apart from hiragana and katakana by its complexity. Most kanji have more than four strokes, and the vast majority have eight or more strokes. 
A stroke, when we're writing in Japanese, whether it's hiragana, katakana, or kanji, is defined as a movement of your writing instrument until such a point where you stop writing, lift it up, and begin another one. A single stroke, therefore, can include changes of direction. Consider, if you will, this character on the right-hand side here. This kanji is the character for answer. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve strokes for this character. Many basic kanji look sort of like the thing they represent. This character here is the one for tree. It looks a bit like a tree. You can see the branches there. The kanji for mountain. Kanji for horse. This little feet down below. And then the kanji for rain. A depiction of rain falling outside of a window. Most kanji, however, do not look anything like the concept or the object that they represent. The kanji for love, for example, doesn't really suggest love. The kanji for gold or the kanji for low. Once upon a time, kanji were pictures of the objects or the concepts that they depicted, but they have long since ventured into more abstract territory and no longer resemble the things that they once did. So a quick recap here. How do we tell hiragana apart from katakana, apart from kanji? Remember, hiragana is curvy. Katakana is sharp. And when it comes to kanji, Again, we can recognize them because kanji is very complex with multiple strokes. Uh, a good rule of thumb to keep in mind. Uh, all hiragana are written with four strokes or less, and all katakana are written with four strokes or less. Therefore, if it has five or more strokes, it is definitely a kanji. Now, there are a good many kanji that are four or fewer strokes as well. Uh, those will be obvious to you once you've learned the basic 46 hiragana and katakana syllables, and of course, you'll be able to tell those apart uh, at a glance. But for now, uh, keep in mind that hiragana and katakana are vastly more simple to write than the majority of kanji. All right, ready to test yourself? I'm going to show you a series of characters here. Go ahead and make your best guess at whether it is a hiragana, a katakana, or a kanji. Is this a hiragana, katakana, or kanji? How about this one? Is this a hiragana, katakana, or kanji? So how did you do? The hiragana we're looking for here, of course, is the first one. We know it's hiragana again because it's got loops and curves. Hiragana again, the more curvy of the two uh, phonetic systems. The second one, katakana, is of course katakana here. This, we can tell it's katakana by its angular and sharp look. The last one there, of course, is kanji, and this is kanji here. We know that's kanji because, again, it's got multiple strokes and uh, is far more complex than either of these two. Let's try other three here and see how you do. Is this hiragana, katakana, or kanji? Is this hiragana, katakana, or kanji? Is this hiragana, katakana, or kanji? How'd you do this time? Hiragana, again, uh, is our first one. We know it's hiragana because it's rather more curvy. The uh, second one we're looking at here is actually katakana. And katakana was this one here. Now, uh, there's a similar look between this one on the far left and the one on the far right. These are both essentially the same character. This is the hiragana version the curves, and this is the katakana version. They're both pronounced ka. Notice again the more angular, sharper nature of katakana in contrast with the uh, slightly more curvy version here. How about this one in the middle then? What are we looking at? Well, uh, that would be 
kanji. Again, we know that's kanji because it's vastly more complex than either of the other two, definitely more than four strokes. Uh, all three of these characters are pronounced the same. Ka, ka, and ka. The ka on the left, the hiragana version, no meaning to it, but simply the syllable ka. The one in the middle is the Chinese character, the kanji for mosquito. And this one on the right is the katakana for ka. Again, no meaning, but simply used to represent the sound ka when spelling Japanese words. Modern Japanese utilizes all three of these writing systems, hiragana, katakana, and kanji, as demonstrated below in this sentence here. Uh, it reads in Japanese, Terebi o mimashita. Terebi o mimashita, which means I watched TV. As you can see, hiragana here in red, this bit here and this bit here, katakana on this slide here in blue, and kanji on this slide in green. Uh, all three are used in a single sentence. Notice again, remember katakana is used to write foreign words, TV, terebi in Japanese, written in katakana. Uh, kanji are used to write concept words like to watch or to look or to see, and we see that in this character here. The first part of the word watched, notice also that the red here is hiragana. That is used to write inflections. That is to say, we'll uh, put the past tense ending on here, and we'll use hiragana to do that. We'll tack it on to the end of the kanji. So, of course, we'll do much more with this in coming lessons, but for now, uh, just an illustration or an example of how all three are used in modern Japanese.